The outbreak of the coronavirus in the first quarter of 2020 and subsequent spike in the number of infections across the globe has triggered myriads of economic challenges, which in turn have grave health implications that require a high level of ingenuity on the part of government and healthcare workers to solve. The novel nature of the virus and the different strains have left even the most sophisticated healthcare systems gasping for breath. More than half of the world's population has experienced lockdown at one time or the other with strong containment measures. Beyond the health and human tragedy of the virus, it is now widely recognized that the pandemic triggered the most serious economic crisis in a century. Nigeria, just like most countries of the world, have put in measures aimed at containing and curbing the spread of the deadly disease. Novel means it's new, it's unraveling, it's unfolding. Definitely, this one too shall pass away. We may have to live with it, but contain it. COVID-19 is real. We had what had happened in Europe, in Americas, and so it has put uh, the pressure on governments to be proactive. I don't think they have uh, gone short of expectations. The oil-rich Delta State government, under the watch of Senator Dr. Arthur Ifanyokoa, has continued to strengthen its fight against the pandemic. The administration, which has been on its toes prior to the outbreak of the coronavirus, had put in place a viable healthcare system to fight and contain communicable diseases in the event of an outbreak. These measures have served Delta as a strong backbone in the face of coronavirus outbreak in the country. There is no doubt that the COVID-19 pandemic has come to affect the world in a very unexpected way. In this state, we're doing a lot to see how we can uh, control and to some extent stop the process of transmission of the virus. And it's important uh, that we work together to be able to beat the virus. His Excellency, even before the outbreak of the COVID-19, um, had actually put in place uh, a strong healthcare sector in Delta State. So he had put in place the health insurance scheme to ensure that every Delton had access to quality and um, efficient and effective health care. His Excellency is a doctor of great repute. Even before we started, we had our first pa positive patient. We had head workers trained. We were already on the ground. In terms of preparation, isolation centers, 12 of them were set up and well equipped with modern facilities. The training for, of manpower to man this station was also there. Healthcare workers were prepared to manage patients in this pandemic. And I think that the success rate that we are recording in Delta could be attributed to this. As the disease continues to evolve with different strains, government and healthcare givers had to adapt and adopt different stratagems, all in a bid to manage and curb the spread of the virus effectively. One of such strategies is the practice of the home-based care, whereby infected persons who meet the required criteria in terms of home accommodation are treated from the comfort of their homes. We had to adopt measures that have been used in other climes that have had more experience with managing this epidemic. So we decided to go for home-based care when the system was seemingly getting overwhelmed. Studies have shown that over 80% of people will have little or no symptoms of COVID-19. So those are the kind of people we leave at home. So, so far it has worked. For this center, we've managed about 150 patients on home-based care. Now we're doing even more, going down to, to, to the homes of those who are, who are, who are ailing to be sure that they receive adequate medical. So uh, there's been a lot, you know, um, dedicated all manner of stuff to fighting this virus. And I said the key was just leadership. To make a success of this method, the government devised a clever scheme involving healthcare givers at the local government levels. Under this scheme, healthcare givers who fall under the state's primary health care is to oversee the smooth running of home-based care. Dr. Charles Eboka. 
the Executive Secretary, Shimane South Local Government Health Authority, in a chat with Smart Media team, spoke on the success they have recorded so far in the home-based care and treatment of the COVID-19 patients. We manage cases of home-based care, a way of trying to curtail the spread of the community transmission of the disease. Because most of the time, some of the patients are symptomatic and they come with mild symptoms. And then instead of keeping the patient in isolation center and the patient is not um, symptomatic, is asymptomatic, and does not have comorbidity, then the patient can be managed at home. On one of their usual routines, Smart Delta Media crew met with the medical team under the leadership of Dr. Charles. The team was fully kitted in their personal protective equipment PPEs as they set out to carry out their duties of monitoring and caring for the COVID-19 patients being managed in their respective homes. Just before they set out for the day, we spoke with Angela Osai, the Disease Surveillance and Notification Officer of the local government alongside other members of the team as they explained the various procedures that are taken to ensure the effective delivery of the home-based care and the successes recorded so far. Take a listen. It is working very well because it has lessened the burden in the hospital and they feel more secured when they are at home. That stigmatization of, ah, I'm in the hospital, I'm in an isolation center, is not there. Because even their neighbors may not even know their diagnosis. For a patient to be qualified for hope care, we must ensure that these patients are not having any signs or symptoms. Then we will now ensure that the patient have a suitable hope, like where he or she can be alone. Once the patients have been confirmed, and the patient is being notified and they make sure that the environment is conducive for the home management. When we go to the specialists, they are recommending us that since we started this home care, that their pressure in the hospital has reduced drastically. In the course of their monitoring activity of the day, we had reasons to follow the team to the residence of a COVID-19 survivor who was successfully managed and treated at the comfort of her home. The 70-year-old lady, though with concealed identity, commended the efforts of the medical officers who have cared for her throughout the treatment period. While stating how comfortable the home-based care could be, she had a few words for those who still doubt the existence of the coronavirus. Take a listen. It was a good time to treat her at home. Because if I had gone to hospital, I don't know if at my age what I, I would have done, you know. Like hot water, who would boil hot water, put in the flask for me to be drinking, making pepper soup for me and those things, you know. I want to thank uh, Nurse Vera too. She was the one that brought my drug here. And uh, when I called her anytime, she would answer me and give me the answer I have to my questions. She said there are many people they are visiting, going about. So I thank God for everything. Mr. Itobore Mbokinyovo is yet another COVID-19 survivor who was successfully managed under the home-based care. In an interaction with the Smart Delta media crew, Itobore recounts his experience whilst undergoing treatment at home. In his words, Itobore referred to the home-based care practice as a winning stroke in fighting the pandemic. He hailed the medical team for their professionalism and dedication to work especially when it comes to monitoring and contact tracing of possible carriers. I actually loved the idea of being treated at home because I had a room where I was already isolated in from my wife and children. With the help of uh, the medical team, they followed me up closely. They provided the needed drugs that uh, kept me going. And um, the comfort of my room you know, gave me the feeling like all was well, I was just having a vacation. Aha, uh -huh, oh boy, how you doing now? Bros, are they final? Ah, uh, you don't uh, do my chair. Yes, bros, yeah, you, no, you don't already need it. Ah, uh, 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 what about your mama? Uh, she go market. Okay, I see how my chair fine. Ah. Uh. Ah, coronavirus can't kill your papa. You not see this kind of beautiful handwork where you do. You see? Ah!
Who tell you say coronavirus give me? Okay. So you day alive. See as my body sweet me. Yes, I day alive. The government of Delta State put in so much to make sure say the isolation centers stay well equipped and the environment very very conducive. Governor Okoa also make sure say the medical personnel are well trained. The emergency response team, Chai Nasuba. So when you see me they bounce like this, <laughs> make you know say the way Delta State government did they fight COVID-19. It go well. The government has continued to support all health agencies directly involved in the fight against the pandemic. Speaking with a state epidemiologist who doubles as the state's incident manager at the Emergency Operations Center for COVID-19 Response, Dr. Richard E. Kwogo, while applauding the government for their enormous support, highlighted the extra measures that are being put in place to strengthen the fight against the virus. Delta State is one of the states that have done training. That's capacity building enough. And the people are being motivated. We have received a lot of cooperation. And the governor is so willing to listen to anybody for anything. In the same light, Wakego Ogwe, the state disease surveillance and notification officer, together with her assistant, Faith Ekakitie, in acknowledging the support of the government for the effective execution of their duties, spoke to us on how they were able to bring to their barest minimum the level of community transmission through contact tracing and active case search. They also revealed the plans to further strengthen surveillance through setting up of community informants. What we are looking at is that we will strengthen surveillance, more of our active case search in our health facilities and in our communities. Once a case is detected, we try as much as possible to isolate these cases immediately. They will not have contact with other members of the community. You see that the chain of transmission is broken. We are able to use it. Angela Okocha Ejeko, a representative of the NCDC Surveillance Support Office working with the state, attests to a high level of commitment shown by the state government through the support given to her office and that of her colleagues. According to her, Delta State is ranking top among many other states in the country in the fight against the pandemic. The government has really helped us. They've helped us, they've given us audience, they've given us machineries. We have so many facilitators from different parastates that have come into the state. And together we've now been able to come out and have a strong system. These things couldn't have been done by NCDC alone. Government presence for COVID-19 response in Delta State has been, has been really great. To further upscale testing for COVID-19, the government has made moves geared towards increasing sample collection capacity. Thus, it has decentralized sample collection and set up collection centers across the 25 local government areas of the state. This move has given a lot more people the opportunity to test. The state government has gone further to organize training programs and seminars for newly recruited laboratory technicians to man the centers. Mr. Nathaniel Inamoto, the head of the laboratory pillar at the Emergency Operations Center for COVID-19 Response, spoke to Smart Delta Media about the development. We took the training in the three senatorial zones. It's not just, oh, you are a lab scientist. If you have not undergone the training for COVID-19 sample collection, we don't draft you to collect sample. They must give it to the state government. They have been very supportive. One of such training programs held recently had lab techs and scientists drawn from both private and public sectors across the 25 local government areas. The training and seminar was practical oriented which reveal the various steps involved in the collection, packaging, and transportation of samples for testing. Clockwise, anti-clockwise, gently, gently, gently. It will cause irritation. It will cause irritation. You don't, just relax, just relax. You see, I'm not making contact. It's getting ready to walk. Some facilitators of the program alongside representatives from the NCDC and Africa Center for Disease Control who were present at the event to ensure the required standards are met while stating the purpose of the program 
commended the state government for investing and supporting the laboratory response team, who are key responders at the front line in the fight against the virus. For us to actually say yes, that this is where we are in the response, the laboratory angle of the response should be efficient, should be effective and should be credible. And that is why we have come today to train this personnel for us to scale up our testing for COVID-19. We know that uh, data is doing a lot and we want to tell them that uh, they are not alone and we are here to maintain the standard for which NCDC is known, for which uh, World Health Organization is known, to make sure that uh, this training is impactful. The initiative is very outstanding. We are building the capacity of the lab personnel that we have here with us. Once the capacity has been built, they can facilitate the process of sample collection. We have been taught to. Ochonago Ikemefune, Wafo Nelson, and Faustina Ongbolu, who are some of the participants in the program, while appreciating the state government, lauded the impact it will have in the fight against the virus. We have been taught on how to protect ourselves, how to collect samples properly, and how to transport them to the laboratory. That will enhance quality results. If I live here and I go to my station, I should be able to take these samples adequately, well, properly labeled, and protect myself from infection. The government should receive kudos on this. The exercise we are here today to observe is a very good one, you know, to boost our knowledge, which will wholly improve the qualities of test results and also increase the scope and numbers, capacity of testing within the states. For me being a participant of this training, I can be able to give the awareness to my patients how to go about the hygiene, taking good care of their self, protecting themselves concerning the COVID-19. Smart Delta. Uh, brother, I be now. I they find social distance. <laughs> Uh, uh. Uh, they show symptoms for some days now. Ambulance, they won't carry me. Ah ah, now something this guy come by now. Uh, uh. Uh, ambulance. <laughs> Understand, I see the ambulance. Make I tell you the truth. Coronavirus not be death sentence. But if you catch coronavirus and you they hide them, then you go infect your loved ones and people around. As you they hide them, if it kill you. But if you go for proper medical checkup and treatment, you go they alive and healthy again. Don't forget to still wear your fix mask properly for the sake of others. I don't come hospital for proper medical checkup and treatment so that I go day LD again. Our quest to bring to you more facts took us to some sample collection centers in some LGAs for on-the-spot assessment on how lessons learned have been put to work. Our first port of call was at the Central Hospital in Wari South local government area where we met Victor Osugu, the lab scientist directly in charge of sample collection. Every patient that has been fully registered, they will come one after the other while I collect the sample from them. I want to thank our state governors and the Yokoa. They really done well in training. That training has been very helpful. They really helped us. They provided material for us. They trained us in the proper way. And none of us have actually lost our lives. Mr. Henry Ukwamedwa, head laboratory services alongside members of the medical team involved in their process, further loaded efforts of the government in not only ensuring training of medical personnel, but also making available all the needed materials and equipment to function effectively. We will be able to demystify the mystery behind the virus, starting with um, the orientation and the effort of our Ibu and Dogged Governor, Senator Dr. Ifan Chikuokawa. We've learned so much based on the training given to us. They have actually provided the PPs and we have them to collect samples. There's insurance policy that the Delta State Government has rolled out for frontline health workers that are actually working in the system. By the time you come for this sample collection, it's either two ways, either you are positive or you are negative. When you are positive, it, you take you to the treatment center and you start taking the drugs. The way you are negative, you will know that you are negative. You will still be protecting yourself. 
We're happy that sampling the opinions of some of the residents who were present to have their samples collected for testing, we discovered they were happy with the development as cost of transportation from their places of residence to Asaba, the state capital, has been cut off, making life much easier for them. Right here, it makes everything much easier for us to come to the center like this and to get our test done, right? Instead of traveling to Asaba or any other place, you know, so it's a laudable development. Actually, I was thinking I would have to travel to Abuja or Lagos, but having it close to us here is a very good thing. It shows that our government is uh, doing all this it takes to fight COVID-19. Going to Asaba, the state capital, is somehow difficult for people like we in Worry because it will take our time and money and the risks of the road. Our findings at the Central Hospital Worry was aching to that of the General Hospital ECMA in Ubia local government area. Though they had no patients on ground for sample collection, however, Mr. Emmanuel Ogboru, head laboratory department and some of his colleagues in an interaction with us mentioned the level of support given by the government towards not just providing the centers but also ensuring that proper training was done to help facilitate the process. The place is really established the necessary things. The materials needed for collection, we have them. The swab, the VTM and all the PPE, we have them. The training was okay, we have a benefit from that. Delta State is one of the few states that has been able to a very great extent flattened the curve of the coronavirus infections. Reasons for this achievement are not far-fetched. The state government has continued to show support for health workers and agencies at the front line. Also, reasonable implementation and enforcement of safety protocols as issued by NCDC has helped a great deal. Our visits to one of the major road transport lines in the state show evidence of how these protocols are being adhered to. to carry 14 before but we've reduced it to 10 passengers since the governor gave us the instruction to reduce it and everybody has been compiling because everybody knows the disease is real so they wear their fixed masks and once they enter the premises they wash their hands and they use their sterilizers before anybody enters the uh, premises you first of all wash your hands with soap and water then you sanitize your hands before you come in for your booking and even as you come in for your booking you have to wear your face masks so we don't allow people that doesn't wear face masks to enter our vehicles. It's very, very compulsory. Ministry of Education in the state has ensured there is no breach of the protocols as students in exit classes in the state resume to sit for their final exams. Smart Delta Media team visited some schools and this was what we found. Student coming back to school is in the right frame. Everything about COVID 19 protocols, the government has taken care of it. And the students and we, the staffs, we are observing everything. It's very nice for us to finally resume to school and continue our education. Now we know that this coronavirus can't stop us from being who we want to be. It's nice to see that the government has provided us sanitizers, face masks, chairs, and other necessary requirements for us to resume school so that we can continue with our SS3 exams without contacting a coronavirus. We've been having this tension of when will the exam come and how will it be if we stay home longer than this. So we want to thank His Excellency Snake Zarifa and Yokoa for providing the necessary facilities needed for our safety and all that and for making us write the examinations. Smart Delta. The health is wealth is an indisputable fact. Senator Dr. Ato Ifani Okoa has done a lot, thereby raising the bar of healthcare delivery in the state. This was achievable because the chief executive rolled off his sleeves and entered into the trenches with his people to fill their posts. Little wonder, Deltans and other stakeholders are happy they can live life and live it even more abundantly in tandem with a vision of building a stronger Delta. 
the feedback segment. Question of the day. Me, I want to ask the government where they go open, where everything will be normal. You don't take where to the day house. So, like my children, now the day house will pass how many months now. Me, I know like her. Thank you for your question. Schools have actually resumed and we have done it fixed with opening of schools. We started with the SS3 classes. They will be concluding on the 7th of September. And the JSS3 students will be coming in 8th of September. And after three weeks, one week of their exam, and the two weeks of revision, the primary C students are expected to come in. Immediately after, we will be announcing when the rest of the students will be coming. So just keep watching your Smart Delta and you'll get more information on that. Thank you. It's important to get informed about what is going on in this state. If you're going to pass suggestions to us as government, your suggestions will be welcome. To know more about the Smart Delta team, follow Smart Delta on their various links. Text your questions to 0901652274 or send with the hashtag AXIT to all our social media platforms. Better run, run, come, come to Delta stage. Come and see the good things where Okowa is, they do it better. Run, come, come to Delta stage. Come and see the good things where Okowa is, they do I see a job and work creation in Delta. Make the youth say them hire Okowa. I see good roads everywhere in Delta. Make the people say them cola. Everywhere, man.